Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to be creating some enemy archetypes, some archers, some bruisers, and some minions. And when I say we are going to be creating them, I mean you are going to be creating them. So let's dive in and start creating some enemies. We're going to start right where you guys left off, and we're going to be placing the dirty old hoe, that is the weapon, into the hand of the player. Now, I'm going to be a little bit contrarian to what Ben's done. I would like for us to have our player be left-handed. Now, my reasoning for that fits within the overall theme of who the player is. The player's not a natural warrior. They're a little bit uh, unnaturally uncoordinated and, and not necessarily up for the task of going out and fighting these big battles. And I think players are so used to the character being right-handed, sword in the right hand, shield in the left hand, becomes very natural. So something about having our player left-handed I think is going to feel a little bit off to the player, which I that's what I'm going for here, for them to be not quite sure why the player feels a little bit different. It's pretty subtle, and you might not really notice it, but uh, I think it's a worthwhile thing to do to take a moment. First of all, we're going to rename these incorrectly named Dirt Old Ho. That's a little bit too not funny and clever enough. What do you guys think about the name of the Dirty Old Ho? Does it work for you? It's an actual farm implementer Ho, but it has another meaning, doesn't it? So we're going to drop this into the left hand, like so, and it's disappeared way off into we don't know where. We'll reset and blink. There it is. I'm just going to quickly reposition it. The way I find that to be most effective is to go into planar, play mode, pause, do our rotations in here when the player's not in their T-pose. You guys will be experts at this by now because you've already done this once or twice or three times, implementing putting a hoe into a farm boy's hand. What do you do in the RPG course? Well, they spend quite a bit of time putting hose into hands. Okay, so uh, we've probably got another 10 times that I'm going to make these ho jokes, and then we'll probably all get a little bit sick of them and be like, oh, yeah, yeah. By the time this game launches, you guys are going to be sick of us making these jokes. That looks pretty good. Let's see how that plays. Run around. Nice straight up and down, which I like. Not clocking him in the head. Good point. Now I've made this mistake a number of times. Don't you guys make this mistake? Go in and copy component, jump out of play mode, and then we will paste back in, paste as component values. Just check that that worked nice and fine. It looks a strange rotation when he, he's got his arm out there, but yeah, it looks pretty good. Wonderful. Part one, success. Let's call that a success. We have the weapon in the hand. Next, what I'm going to do is when, I'm, when I was running around here before, I saw that uh, there's some weird behavior going on. I thought, oh, goodness, what has Ben done this time to the code, and how is this all working? And I realized that it's all entirely me being a big spaz. I have gone and put, let us guess what used to be there, huh? Uh, I wonder what that could be. Uh, okay, so there used to be a house there, and there no longer is. That's all me. My bad. It's good to check these things every now and again. Just have a look at your nav mesh, make sure it's all sweet and looking nice. And the third thing I wanted to do before we dive in and do our enemy archetype stuff is it's been bugging me for a while that our light source, which is the sun, has some very harsh shadows. You look there, it's quite, uh, quite contrasty from the dark to the not dark. So I'm going to go down and turn the strength of our shadows in our sun down to 0.7. Make it a little bit softer, maybe 0.6, yeah, there we go, just a little bit softer. I'm also going to make the sun a little bit more um, sunset-ish, a little bit more saturation on that, a little bit more golden. Not a huge difference, but I like to just do a little bit of visual tweaking every time I jump in there. Each day, you're going to be doing lots of coding and features and debugging. It's good to do a little bit of the niceties, place some props around, tweak your buildings. Don't leave it all until the very end. Don't leave it all until the right now I'm going to make this look good. If you're a solo developer, this is your responsibility to make sure the overall aesthetics and feeling and mood and everything is fitting together. Okay, now let's talk about enemies. What we're going to do is create some enemy archetypes. And what I mean by that is types of enemies that we can reuse in a number of different ways with a number of different instance, instances and executions. So in this video, we're going to create three archetypes. The archer, which has low hit points, is slow but high damage. The minion, low hit points, is fast moving but low damage. 
and the Bruiser, high hit points, very slow, and high damage. So these are archetypes or types of enemies that you guys will have seen a gazillion times as you've been playing RPGs. The player will recognize them and know them, and they're a staple. And it allows us, once we've created these, to create interesting moments where we can combine them together. We can have five minions and two archers, and that's a moment. There's a particular combat style that you'll need to have there. Or maybe it's just three bruisers on their own, and what do you do in that combat moment? So we can combine them together. I'm going to start with the archer. That's where we're going to start. I think that'd be interesting. I'm just going to clean up a little bit here. We don't need all these guys in the scene just at the moment. We'll go in and delete a few of these enemies that are goofing around and creating tons of gizmos and stuff. That's pretty good, just to make it nice and clean so I can have a battle against this one guy here who apparently is Boris. So, Radio Boris, you're going to be an archer from this point. From henceforth, Boris shall be known as an archer. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is turn his speed down. I don't think archers are really... Uh, on the track team at school necessarily. Three is probably pretty good. Um, at the moment we're just playing around, getting a feeling, seeing how we go with it. And I think he's going to have a pretty big attack radius. He's an archer. He went to archery school for three years, got his archery diploma, and he can shoot a reasonably long distance. And he's not letting you get away once you're out of view. He's still going to be doing a little bit of pew pew to try to get you. But he's not going to bother chasing you, is he? So we'll turn this chase radius down a bunch. So once you get close, probably he wouldn't move at all, to be honest. He's just going to stand and deliver. Uh, and once you get close, he's still going to shoot at you, I think. We won't worry about trying to pretend that he's got a, a little knife that he pulls out or something. That feels pretty good at the moment. The other thing, maybe he's currently got slow projectile. Let's go and have a look at projectiles. We'll give him the fast... Whoop. We'll give him the fast projectile, I think. Uh, there we go, just dragging projectile to use, being fast projectile. Let's have a look at this and see how this guy feels now. So he's going to be, whoa, 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 shoot, shoot, shoot. That's <laughs> pew, pew, pew. He's maybe a little bit too uh, quick draw, isn't he? I like that range. We maybe want to give him a extended a little bit more, but he's definitely firing too fast at us. So let's go seconds between shots 1.5, see how that feels. And while we're here, we'll have a look at his damage. Now, I think we're still way too early in our game to uh, pull out the spreadsheet and say what is our, what's our damage matrix and what's our level matrix and at level 2, how much damage do we do and level 10 and so on. We will get there and we'll spend a lot of time on that. For now, we just want to get some general baselines, a little bit similar to the way we said uh, recently we are talking about a bridge should be two or three players' width, you know, two or three characters across. We want to do a little bit of that now, and I think I'm going to start to try to get a language for the damage that, that enemies do and have 10 as kind of a baseline of... A regular, you know, moderately capable enemy will do 10 damage per hit. Whereas a, a, an enemy that's super, super weak is going to do maybe one. An enemy that's really a big tough guy might do 100. And an archer, he's going to do, I think, 20, we'll say. For now, see how that goes. We don't need to have it perfect yet. I'm going to do more damage type stuff, hit points, damage, relationship in the next video. For now, I just want to start to get a little bit of a feel for it and ink some stuff in there. We need to play around with the player's hit points. Need to talk about what stage of the game would this prototype be at. That rate of fire feels better. And then we'd come up, we'd attack, attack. Yeah, I mean, the animations are still a bit wonky and, you know, everything's placeholder in the look and he's shooting tennis balls, for goodness sake. But I think that feels pretty archery, doesn't it? Okay, pretty archer E, I I guess. Not archery is in the event, but archery is in... Well, you know what I mean. Although each time I say Archer, I think of the TV show. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but I love Archer, the TV show. It's very cool. So we're going to drag Boris down here, blink, and turn him into a prefab. Probably going to rename him Archer so he's not actually Boris down there. Or else Ben will look and say, what is a Boris? What does a Boris do? Archer is a little bit better to understand. And we're going to give him a color as well. Duplicate that. What color shall an Archer be? I'm thinking uh, a little bit Robin Hood out in the forest. Let us make him green. Green enemy. There we go. And we will open up his prefab, drag green, although it's currently red, onto the Ethan body. And we'll pick a green. There we go. That looks like he's changed green up there. That's a 
definitely a nice, bright, ugly looking green. Let's make him a little bit more earthy. There we go, there's a green archer. Lovely, so we have created a an enemy archetype. There's a prefab we've now got as archer. He has certain abilities, which is wonderful, and we can start dragging more of him into the scene. And if we wanna be nice to Ben, let's call the original guy, let's rename him. Okay, he can be Boris the Archer. I'd spell Boris with one R, but Ben had it with two R's, so let's be kind of Ben and spell it that way. And who shall this, who shall his buddy be over here? Should be maybe, um, yeah, let's see, he can be Bar uh, Bevan, Bevan the Archer. There we go. Boris and Bevan. Wonderful. Let's see how it goes with two, just to make sure it all works and makes sense. We're going to do a nice rapid fight. Whoa, that hurt. Pew. Okay, bam, if I run up, that other guy's still shooting me. Whoa, you guys do some serious damage. Okay, we'll have to tune the damage. Uh, in the next next video, that'll be fun to do the damage. Okay, I'll tune the damage. So we've got a couple of archers in there. And so now, for your challenge, I would like you to create the other enemy types that we just spoke about. A recap on that, the minion and the bruiser. You guys know what minions and bruisers do, but minion is uh, fast, low hit points, low damage. Bruiser is high hit points and runs pretty slow and high damage. So go ahead and create the minion and bruiser enemies and tune them, like play around with the numbers, until you feel that the execution, that is what you've created, matches your intention. And what is your intention? Well, our intention with a minion, for example, is for it to be a pest. For them to be a number, for there to be a number of minions, they run fast and they kind of poke at you and and they don't really hurt you a ton, but they kind of, they're pesky and they get in the way. So when you feel you've got that intention as an execution, then success and you can stop. So uh, go ahead, create those enemy types and I will see you in a moment. Okay, welcome back. Let me show you what I was doing while you guys were doing that. I went ahead and created a bruiser myself and a minion as well. I'll show you my working here. So for the bruiser, I have given him a fairly uh, tight attack radius. So he only attacks you when you're really close and a medium kind of uh, chase radius as well. So he'll, he'll come and get you. I gave him a speed of two, pretty slow. I increased his damage per shot to 40. Now, I'm pretending he's me melee, uh, or melee, or melee. I, I don't think the bruiser's actually gonna be shooting, but for now, we're just fudging it, right? We're just pretending. We're just saying he's uh, shooting something, but it would actually be hit. With 2.5 seconds between projectiles. So if I run at him, I run down here, and he comes running at me if I get close. Otherwise, he's like, ah, oh, I couldn't be bothered. And he's going pretty slow. He's pretty easy to run away from and avoid, but I wanna go and get the sweet loot that he's holding. And so that feels pretty good. Like I said, we'll tune our hit points soon. And then the minion, he comes scooting at me pretty fast. He's not actually gonna hit me as well until I get pretty close to him. He gets close to me, so a pretty tight radius and he's hitting me there. Uh, and that feels pretty good. The big test for the minions will come. Let me just get my player. It's bugging me a little bit that these guys get a free shot on me. When, there we go, when I first start. I think, let's put him down in this bridge section we had down here. I have a whole bunch of minions. We'll do some duplicating down here of the minions. Duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. Control D. And then if I run down there for my little minion fest, let's see how we go with those guys down here. And uh, yep, they're all swarming me, pesky, not doing as much damage, but that feels pretty good. Might wanna have their attack, also their, uh, what is it here, the chase radius a little bit bigger, they're not letting us get away, and uh, put a bit bigger, and I'll apply him back to the prefab, so they all should get that, and that looks pretty cool. I didn't show you everything from him, did I? I had his speed at six, I upped that a little bit, playing around with that, and then also had his, uh, you can see my radius there, I'll just make them nice neat numbers for now, I know Ben likes when they're neat numbers, and uh, damage per shot two, I have with him, just pretty low, we'll see how that goes and uh, seconds between shots one, a little bit more rapid than the bruiser over there who was I think two or two and a half. And uh, I've got, let me just apply that back to the prefab. I have fast projectile on these guys. We can play around with that a little bit net more, but for now we're just pretending that they have uh, me melee weapons where they're actually just shooting at us. That feels pretty good. 
Um, so we've got our archers, we've got our bruiser, and we've got our minions. And for my minions, I made them black. I just gave them a new texture. If you also made your minions black, you're probably going, hey, I made my minions black as well. That's very cool. And the bruiser, I made blue. And there we have it. We've got uh, three archetypes. Hopefully you went well that, with that exercise. Now that we've got these archetypes, we can mix and match them, join them together in the next video. We're going to be doing a lot of that, joining them up, having some combat moments, and having a look at the balance between the health and the damage that we're doing. So I will see you in the next video.